Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me on. So I'm going to share my screen. That's okay with everyone. If you all can see this. So my talk today is GitOps and runtime security. Your, sec your cookies need a new recipe. I've given this talk with different technologies through the course of uh, the year. And this is actually my last talk on, 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 on cookies and, and, uh, and GitOps and, and cloud native. My name is Dan Poppendre. I'm the director of open source community ecosystem for Sysdig. And, uh, but I work on the uh, project called Falco, which is a runtime security tool. So when you're baking cookies, right, your first ingredient, right, if, we're, if you're baking cookies, but also talking about runtime security, your first ingredient is syscalls. So what are syscalls and why syscalls? When you run a program, you are making system calls. So when you're, you know, if your program is entering the kernel to perform a task like processes or network or file IO, those things are touching the, um, the kernel, right? And so that's what system calls does. Your second ingredient, is eBPF, which stands for Enhanced Berkeley Packet Filtering and Falco. So what eBPF is, it's safe, efficient Linux kernel access. So that allows you to run kernels into the Linux kernel without having to submit a PR to actual kernel updates, which usually are a lot slower in terms of delivery, in terms of the delivery aspect of it. You can access kernel activity without risking your system stability or, or, or security. And they're very useful for different things like security, monitoring, and troubleshooting. So now let's talk about Falco. So Falco is a CNCF cloud native runtime security incubating project. Um, we're also uh, in the process of graduation as well. And we were, it's created by Sysdig in 2016. It basically detects unexpected application behavior and alerts on threats at runtime. And what does Falco do? It uses system calls to secure and monitor system by parsing the system calls from the kernel at runtime, asserting a stream against the powerful rules engine, and then alerts uh, when a rule is violated. So in terms of the architecture, briefly, again, it's where we have this kernel module, and then we have these libs that filter expressions that are suspicious events or alerts and, and rule sets, and then can output to things like syslog, file, standard IL, shell, HTTPS, or gRPC, which you can output to something like Prometheus or uh, Falco Sidekick, which, by the way, is community contributed. And what's great about it is it can connect your Falco to any parts of your ecosystem, the things like, I don't know, Flux or Lambda or, you know, or any of those level of functions. So it's a sidecar that runs and I'm gonna demonstrate that. Falco already ships with a default set of over 120 rules that are syscall level rules, rules like um, uh, creating symlinks or, you know, somebody uh, executing into a shell or being in a directory that they shouldn't, but also Kubernetes audit log capability. So if somebody's trying to create a namespace they shouldn't or anything like that, you'll get alerted to that effect. The third ingredient is GitOps. And what I'm going to demonstrate today is a real, with Flux, excuse me, is I'm going to demonstrate a cookie, somebody coming in to take a recipe, right? So like, and so we're going to go in and use uh, Dev, um, GitOps and use Flux to be able to automate a rule change, a Falco rule change in, in real time. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and go into Visual Studio. Bear with me one second. Okay, hopefully you all are seeing this. So I have, uh, let me go ahead and screen screen here. I have this cookie recipe that's on screen. So there's GitHub's day uh, cookie recipe and I've shared this. Um, I'm using something called uh, Sevo Cloud, which is a K3S uh, managed service that allows us to just spin up a quick cloud, uh, or sw 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 up a, a, a quick Kubernetes cluster. And so let me go ahead and show you. So if I go here, you can see my cluster is up. Sec here, and then if I go K get nodes here, and then K get pods, or kubectl, excuse me, all namespaces. I've deployed Flux and Falco, all in, in this bakery setup here. So if you see here on the on the left side of the screen, you can see there's my we're calling it the bakery. We have our recipes, we have our YAML, and this is all being uh, kind of um, uh, managed by Flux. So this has been deployed. I've also deployed the Falco sidekick as well. Okay, so nothing is being addressed here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to show you this recipe here. And so if you see here, this is a, just a standard uh, daemon set deploy, uh, deployment. 
And you can see that I have this mount path of user share and GenX HTML. And there's my recipe of the thing I just showed you we deployed. Now, if we go into Helm real quickly, we can see I have this rule. And what I want to do is I want to kind of change this. And so this is the whole point of this. If I have rules, I can use, and I've heard this on a lot of ups, is basically like, well, I have this rule. I want to kind of manage my rules as code. I want to be able to manage these things and be able to say, look, if something happens, like an intrusion or anything was like that, I want to enable this and I want to do it quickly. So from this perspective, I'm just going to try to check in this change here. So I'm going to go emergency. So let me show you the anatomy of briefly about um, a rule in Falco. You see there's a rule definition. This is all YAML, right? There's a description, detect tampering of cookie recipes. There's a condition. And if you look at the conditioning aspect, this is like a file descriptor name starts with user engine X. I showed you that's a, that's where we're, we've stored uh, in our, in our uh, deployment, the, the detail there. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And you can see here, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and commit my change. I'm going to say change rule to emergency. And I'm going to push. Now, Flux, as it stands, right, is going to kind of look for those changes uh, from customized and all of those things and be able to tell us, okay, well, let me go ahead and get gay at pods. See Falco's running. It's going to make the, the changes. If we go into our um, repo, we can see that this has been pushed 24 seconds ago. And this is the, um, the time it's been pushed here. We can see. So I'm going to go ahead and get pods. HW. So you see that it terminated because right now those pods are just getting updated based on that rule change because I've changed this priority or if I've wanted to add additional rules, I'm checking in these rules as code that happens. So let's go ahead and try to attack our cookie recipe. So we're going to cube NS. Okay, and if I go okay, get pods, there's that Nginx deployment that is the, this right here, right? It's exposed on support 6000. And I'm just going to try to exec into the pod. And I'm in the pod. I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to try to more the Etsy. If I'm a, an attacker, I'm going to go in there. Because if you, and again, I've installed, I have Falco running in this deployment. If I didn't have this, I wouldn't know who's coming into my environment, dropping a payload or trying to go in there. So I just did Etsy shadow, right? And I want to go to user, share, nginx, HTML. And there's my index.html. If I was a hacker, well, what would I do? I would probably drop my payload in this directory. I'd come in, I'd, you know, curl in and out, grab, you know, whatever, you know, Man, uh, whatever payload that I want to do, some root kits or whatever I need to do there, right? So I'm going to try to move this. And call it hacked uh, HTML. Can't move it. It's read only file system. So maybe I go another route. So let's look. We're going to go here. We see our UUI is up and running. So we can see here, look at that. There's our warning. We have our GitOps uh, day 2021. It also said read, read, read and sen uh, sensitive file. And you can see here, this shows us exactly that file descriptor of Etsy shadow was touched. It shows us which pod name this happened on when I moored Etsy shadow, right? And then if we look at our GitOps day, remember that description here? Warning, cookie recipes have tampered. Secure your cookies. That's that description I showed you. So in real time, we were able to show that this, this, um, this, was, uh, th this, uh, this basically rule was updated at, in, in real time. Let me go ahead and do a refresh here. And there we go. So again, we have this this capability for showing and all of these. Again, you have all of these other rules, but you, all of these rules out of the box, but you can add additional ones as well. So there's other things you can do responding to threats. You can update file rules based on threats using Flux, because again, if we think of GitOps, what are we doing? We're reacting quickly to things. We're using these, you know, these functions. We're using rules as code. We can trigger actions. We wrote a uh, response engine, and there's a forthcoming one we're writing on Flux as well with Falco, where basically we can have it do trigger actions. Like you can then have it trigger, we call it the response engine, trigger something like a, f a function of some sort, 
or you know maybe have it like do a mem dump or something like that so those are things is the sky is the limit you can use things like k native you can use things like uh, lambda functions you can do use things like um, you know even CICD functions right so there's that but also you can enable and disable outputs so sidekick as I talked about here has all of these outputs right if we look in our helm chart that's here right we can see that you can enable certain functionalities here so if I want to output this to slack or Prometheus or any of those types of things I can just update this helm chart and be and have that in real time again using the power of Flux and Falco. Now, if you want to get involved, and I'm sorry I'm blazing through this right now, but if you want to contribute to Falco, we're at falco.org. We're also, um, there's a Falco project in GitHub. So if you go to Falco Security, that slash Falco. We're on Kubernetes Slack as well. So if you uh, if you Kubernetes if you look at go to the Kubernetes Slack there's a Falco channel, um, and also like getting involved in the community in terms of like you can do things like uh, up, uh, getting involved at the core engine perspective, integration and tools, uh, rule sets as well as documentation. Um, so that kind of you know tells you a little bit of what's going on with Falco. But again if you look at like the response engine as a, as a, as a capability those are things where it actually contributed by the community. It was not done by main maintainers, which is really cool. That repo that I just showed you that had, you know, here, I'm going to go ahead and show you this again. But basically, if you look here, this whole, I just did a git pull, did a couple of changes as you saw here. But you have this beautiful recipe that I showed you here that you can take. It's less than a minute. And again, I used, I spun up uh, something called Sivo Cloud. And it's, uh, you know, I spun that up and then I just basically did used Flux to be able to, uh, you know, use the, the repo to use like real GitOps functions to deploy this whole cluster as well as Falco, Flux, and all of those capabilities. So if you go to github.com slash danpop sd slash falco dash flux, uh, you'll be able to do just the same as what I did here and maybe even improve on it. So PR is welcome on that one if you all want to do that. Um, I want to give a shout out to the first time I actually been really working with um, uh, Flux a lot is based on the Kubernetes at Home group, if, and and they they use a, a Flux a lot to be able to show capabilities, and and I was floored by the capabilities you can do with Flux, and that's where we got the genesis of of trying to work with um, you know Flux and, and Falco because there's a definite need for this because basically if when you from a security perspective, as a security professional, being able to have, be able to protect you at runtime to me is a capability I think that is enhanced by using GitOps functions. That is my talk, everyone.